The reason I enjoy doing live events is that it's a great way for me to be able to meet an awful lot of new people and be able to um, show them that there's a whole new way of dealing with their horses and building relationships. Bishop Burton was a super choice. They have a fabulous new arena there, very modern, very bright, very comfortable for an audience and a beautiful space for me to use. When I'm given a real bad problem pony, a problem horse, it rears, it bucks, it bites, it's vicious, it, it, it's terrified, it's whatever it is, and it's something that the owners can no longer manage. These techniques give the horse a way in immediately, where the horse can start to let its barriers down and start to think in de-stress. And also it gives the owners a technique which they can use as a follow-up. So often um, a lot of the techniques are great when they're done by the trainer, well, what does the owner do when they go home? The biggest difference with my stuff, on my way, is that it's exactly that. It's for the owners to be able to manage when they go home. On the day, I asked three people to volunteer their, their horses, and I got three really severe problems. The first of which was a little pony called Sweetie. I've earned Sweetie eight months, and the problem is he's really nervous. Olivia was riding him and she had, she had a bit of time off from him in, in winter. So then we brought him back into work. He was even more nervous. When like Olivia's riding him, if something worries him, he shoots off, which is a bit dangerous with a young rider. So I'm hoping that she can calm him down. <laughs> Little Sweetie, bless him, when he came, was so frightened. He'd had an accident with the saddle. He just thought it was always going to happen again. Really, really frightened of any movement on board him, just panicky, wanted to run, and so awful for his gorgeous little girl owner. Before I work with any horse, the first thing I do is do what I call a pain assessment, and it's where I work my way down through the horse's body and find out if there's anything clinically wrong with the horse. Is it in pain? When I did my pain examination on Sweetie, um, we obviously found an awful lot of very, very um, spasmed muscles because he was very, very uptight. But we did identify that he did need the chiropractor. He was very limited in his neck movement. My instinctive approach with each and every one of these horses is to create a bond very, very quickly that wherever I am and whatever it is I'm doing is okay. It's a great place to be. So you can push the horse away, you can do some stuff with them. They always return to you for positive reinforcement and it immediately gives you a workable relationship. The whole point of everything that I had to do with Sweetie on the day was to desensitize him. Um, we did it obviously down his sides where the saddle had been. We used a plastic bag all over his body, rattly, very, very frightening stuff. He stood there and accepted it all really happily. I started jumping about all over him, which normally he would have gone woof and gone. And he was just stood there and allowing me to leap on him on one side, jump up off him on the other side. Just starting to calm down and accept that it's okay, it was a nice place to be. He could have gone at any time, but always on a loose rope. They can go any time they want, they choose not to. Sweetie's issues, all of them were through fear. Um, he was a very, very scared little pony. The next horse that came into the arena was a mare called Lottie, ferociously stubborn and adamant that it would not load. I bought Lottie 18 months ago and her problem is she will not go in the trailer. If I go anywhere, we can get in the trailer to go, but then we can't get back. She won't just will not come back. So what I'm hoping to achieve today is Melanie to sort her out and hopefully get her so that she will just walk in the trailer of her own accord without having to be forced. When um, I'm given a job to train a horse to load, the issues are usually the fact that they're not comfortable in that space. They're not comfortable in the trailer or the wagon because of accident, fear, claustrophobia, force, pain, being hit, whatever. By the time you finish the groundwork with the horses, you have got the relationship where you're saying, wherever I am is the place to be. So therefore, with the loading job, if I am in the trailer, that's the place the horse should want to be. And it's a comfortable place to be. I gave Lottie the option to load earlier on in the training session um, to test the relationship that I had with her. Lottie said no. I don't respect you enough at that point, so she got more pressure put on her away from the trailer. 
to reaffirm the fact that I was dominant and that the place that I was was the place to be. When I then put her back to the trailer again, she became more open-minded. Once you've actually captured the horse's mind and captured its spirit in as much as you have the relationship, going into the trailer is not the issue. As soon as that she went in, I brought her back out again and put her back in again. And people were like amazed because it had taken me such a long time to get her in there in the first place. Why on earth would I take her out? They would have been so grateful to have just had her in there. But I said, no, we're going to just go in and out, in and out, in and out. Wherever I am is the place to be. The great thing about Bishop Burton for me was that I was offered three completely different horses. Obviously starting with little Sweetie who was terrified of everything, Lottie who was as stubborn as the day was long, and then there was Blade. I got Blade from a dealer's yard as an unbroken little wild thing. Um, he's very scared of people, he's very scared of noise and he lacks a lot of self-confidence. Um, he has some panic attacks, so uh, he's really um, quite a good problem horse for Melanie to deal with. My, my hope for the future is that from today's session with Melanie, he will gain, gain a lot more confidence. Blade was a little horse that very much held his mum, Becky, to ransom. Um, very fearful of anybody else. Um, and he was very nervous in the arena, very nervous of the crowd completely panic-stricken little person when we started. At one point in time, Blade started to actually get quite cross with me because all the things that he normally gets away with, he wasn't getting away with. He couldn't run away. And he actually started to stamp his feet at me and dictate the fact that the space we had, he was going to stay there happily and he'd had enough of me and he was going to have a go at me. And it was very funny and it was a great turning point for me because he'd swung from outright fear to actually having an opinion. Carly, my head girl, who worked with me for the day, she started to jump about on his back, invading his space. Instead of him running away, which he normally would have done, and bolted off, he was worried, but he allowed it. By the time we'd finished, he was relaxed in front of the audience, he was walking up to them, he was allowing me to climb all over him. Carly started to ride him, and Becky had never been able to put another rider on him. My way of training horses and these techniques that are used are so easy for people to use themselves. And these techniques give you the most fantastic relationship with your horses and can stop problems happening in the first place. Um, and I'd love to be able to get out there and show people more of this way of doing it, because it's applicable to everybody. Today at the show, Sweetie's been really great. I've got two first on him. I didn't think I was going to get two first. I thought um, that I was going to get somewhere um, lower. Since Mel's been working with Sweetie, I, now I can touch his head, catch him in the field, catch him in his stable, and I can ride him better. And um, he's a lot more calmer than he used to be. And when you couldn't like turn his head, um, now we can do it and he's got a lot better. I think Mel's really good and um, she's got a lot of patience. Um, it's been two months now since me and Blade visited the demonstration at Bishop Burton with Melanie Watson. Um, I try to bring Blade every week now to do a little bit with Melanie and the change in him is absolutely unbelievable. He's not frightened of people anymore. My mother going into the field, just doing the field droppings, Blade would run a mile and whereas now he actually wants to follow her around the field. I don't have a problem loading him. I don't have a problem bringing him anywhere with new people. He wants to talk to people now, whereas before he would actually try and run away. Even today, stood here with the cameras and the mics and everything. He's just stood, whereas, you know, normally he'd want to run away from everything. And, you know, um, it's all down to the different training that I've done with Melanie. What, one of the um, training exercises that Melanie uses is a great big scary bag 
which she gets the horse to actually follow around the school so he actually understands that it's not that scary because he's constantly walking towards it so he's not trying to run away from the situation. Um, we then actually pick the bag up and try and put the bag on top of the horse which is very loud, crinkly, really quite scary for any horse really but um, all been well, we've done it once, hopefully we'll do the same exercise again and you know it just helps in his self-confidence.